Let's take a look at the operating principles of the rotary encoder. We'll look at quadrature encoding, interface circuit design, and switch debouncing. Here's the rotary encoder that is included in the MyRio starter kit. This rotary encoder is also commonly referred to as a quadrature encoder. We'll get into the meaning of that word quadrature here in a little bit. Now let's consider the operating principle of rotary encoder. I have two concentric circles. These are called the switch rings. And each switch ring contains four contact zones that are all connected electrically and brought out as terminal A. Here's a contact zone indicated with a thicker gray line. In between, we have connecting wire. Now this is not a contact area, but it does connect all four of the contact zones together. Now we have a rotating contact whose connection is brought out as the COM or common terminal. The contact can be rotated clockwise and it can also be ro rotated counterclockwise. I'll keep track of the angle of rotation as theta, reference to the 12 o'clock position. Now let's take a look at what happens when you rotate that knob. And I'll be looking at the open and closed behavior of the switches for the switch rings A and B. We're doing that as a function of rotation angle theta. Now in this position, theta equals zero, both switches are open. I'll rotate the contact a little bit until it contacts the first switch zone. If you trace this out from COM to A, we see that we have a switch closure in this region. However, if you trace out what's happening here, the wiper is not in contact with the switch or with the switch ring for B. So this one is still open. Let's advance this a little further. Now it has contact with both switch zones. B is, in, is closed as is A. All right, rotate a little further yet. Now it is no longer in contact with switch ring A. So this switch is open, but switch B is still closed. And next at this angle, we see that it is not in contact with either one of those contact zones. And both A and B are indicated then as open. Now let me quickly go through the next set here. And if you need to, you can pause the video and just confirm that the switching waveforms that you see actually make sense. These switching patterns look like square waves. And the interesting thing about the pair of square waves is that they end up being shifted with respect to each other. The B waveform looks like it's a delayed version of the A waveform. One cycle has four distinct zones, hence the name quadrature. So this, this pair of waveforms that we were looking at are referred to as quadrature waveforms. Now these waveforms are based on A closing before B, and that occurs whenever we have clockwise rotation. However, if you back up the knob and it rotates in the counterclockwise direction, then we see that A closes after B. And that has the effect of advancing the square wave waveform instead of being delayed version of A, now we see that B is an advanced version of A. And this is very useful because with this relative change between A and B, we can infer the direction of rotation of the knob as well. Now the rotary encoder has a series of, de of detents around the periphery of the switch and this gives us a resting place for the rotating contact. And you can actually feel these as little little stops as you rotate the knob. 
Now the picture that I'm showing here would be called a four-step encoder. It has four zones per step. That means that we have 16 unique zones for one revolution. Generally, the rotary encoders will have many more zones available. Now let's find out how to interface the rotary encoder to MyRio. MyRio includes four encoder inputs total. On MXP connectors A and B, we have one encoder each. And these encoder inputs are shared with the DIOs, or digital input outputs. On the MSP connector, connector C, we have a pair of encoders available. Encoder 0 and encoder 1, also shared with the DIOs. Now we need to be aware of the difference between MXP and MSP. MXP connectors have internal pull-up resistors. That means that the common of the rotary encoder needs to be connected to ground. Conveniently enough, we have one of the ground pins available here. So we can simply connect the common in between and do the direct connection as I've indicated here. The MSP connector uses internal pull down resistors and that means that we need to connect the COM to plus 5 volts. You could use plus 3.3 volts from the MXP connector if you want, but it's probably more convenient to just use the power supply on the MSP side. Now finally, let's take a look at an important consideration for the interface circuit. So far it seems like the interface is pretty simple with a direct connect, but we need to explicitly deal with the problem of switch bounce. Switch bounce is mechanical chatter as the switches close and open. Ideally, the waveform would be nice and clean like this, but in reality, the actual waveform would look something like this. We have multiple transitions, we have random number, and these tend to be in the microseconds region. We need to ensure that we present a clean waveform to the MyRio encoder inputs. The encoder input has an internal pull-up, of 40 kilo ohms approximately. That feeds a Schmidt trigger with a hysteresis of approximately 0.1 volts. And that cleans up the signal coming in, but it still is not enough to deal with the switch chatter problem. So in between the encoder switch and the encoder input, we need to insert an RC low pass filter. And this greatly reduces the high frequency chatter of the switches. The 4.7K resistor is low enough to keep the low state voltage under the specified VOL max, which is 0.4 volts. That basically says that to be properly interpreted as a low state voltage, we need to present no more than 0.4 volts to the encoder input. The 0.01 microfarad capacitor is also low enough to keep a quick, reasonably quick low to high transition. Let me illustrate what I mean by this. If we look at the actual analog waveform being presented to the encoder input, I'll call that V sub A of T, when the switch first closes, then we are doing a transition from high to low, 3.3 volts heading towards ground, and the rate is dictated by this RC constant of the 4.7K and the 0.1 microfarads. And this is a relatively short time constant with the value 4.7K. Now, when the switch opens again, then the output will start heading back towards 3.3, but now the rate is governed by the internal pull-up resistance because the switch being open means that the 4.7K resistor is no longer in the picture. Now we have a long time constant which is a little less than 10 times what we had on the way down. We can also adapt this circuit for use on the MSP side with its internal pull-down resistor. Flip this around. Now, instead of connecting the resistor to ground via the switch, we need to connect it up to 5 volts, and we have our internal pull-down resistance of around 40K.